Hi, I'm Omkar, and this is the second part of my NC and GT talk. Uh, in some sense, this talk is a continuation of the first part, but you can also watch this talk independently. In the first part of the talk, we discuss the main theorem and the sort of cobordisms we will be working with, as well as some of the motivation and the and applications of the theorem we want to prove. But for the sake of completeness, I will also briefly describe what the main theorem is in this talk as well. Uh, okay, so I'll be talking about Kavanaugh homology and cobordisms between split links. And all of this is joint work with Adam Levy. Okay, uh, so this is the main theorem. Uh, on the left side, what we have is a cobordism is a is a non-split cobordism that goes between split links. That is, on the left on the leftmost end of the cobordism, we have the link L one is split from the link L2 and the rightmost and the link L1 prime is split from the link L2 prime. But in the middle, this cobordism that is a blue and red components are allowed to be linked up in some complicated way. So the mantra is that the red and blue are split on the ends, but in the middle, they might be linked up in a complicated way. On the right, what we've done is we've completely separated the red component from the blue component. So this red component here is isotopic to this red component here. And this blue component here is isotopic to this blue component here. All we've done is separated them entirely. So we've taken a non-split cobordism between split links and created a split cobordism between split links. And our claim is that these two cobordisms, even though they may not be isotopic to one another, they, are, they induce homotopic maps on Kavanaugh homology. So the cobordism on the left we'll call C and the cobordism on the right we'll call sep of C. As short for separation of C because we formed it by separating the red and blue components. Okay, so in, in slightly technical language, what our theorem is saying is that if you have two partition homotopic cobordisms between split links, then the induced Kavanaugh maps are homotopic up to an overall side. And somehow the intuitive picture that captures the essence of this main theorem is this picture above. It is if you have this red and blue components linked up in some complicated way in the middle, you can just separate them out and not change the Kavanaugh map. Okay, now I'll say a little bit about the Kavanaugh complex. So when the Kava so normally the Kavanaugh complex is created by chain groups, and then you've got uh, a differential going between them given by a group homomorphism. But Barnaton came up with a tangle story for the Kavanaugh complex. That is, in, the, in Barnaton's Kavanaugh complex, this is what the picture would look like. So you take a crossing as shown here and you resolve it. So you get one of two resolutions like this. And you, and between these two resolutions, you have a saddle cobordism that looks like this. So rather than having a chain group here and chain group here, and then you have a differential between them, we have, uh, we instead have these resolutions and on either side, and then you've got these saddle cobordisms that go between them. So the picture here is shown for a single crossing tangle, but if you do this for all the crossings in your link diagram, then what you end up getting is the entire Kavanaugh complex in the Barnatan story. And these, this ends up being a useful way to work with things and it is the way in which we will be describing the statements that we use in order to prove our main theorem. Okay, so right now I'll introduce another complex called the Batson seed complex. Uh, so if you take an a link diagram L and you assign a weight to each component of it. So for the sake of simplicity, we can assume that a link diagram consists of two components, a red component and a blue component. And now you can assign a weight to the red component and the blue component. And for the sake of simplicity, 
let's assign the integer one to red and the integer zero to blue. So this is done in such a way that the difference between the two weights is invertible. So in such a setting, Batson and Sieve create a complex called the Batson Sieve complex that is very similar to the Kavanov complex, but it has the following nice property. Okay, so on the left, we have a crossing in which the red strand goes over the blue strand. On the right, the blue strand goes over the red strand. But such is the nature of the Batson seed complex that these two Batson seed complexes are isomorphic. And these isomorphisms are given by crossing change isomorphisms that we will denote by CC, C, where CC stands for crossing change. So this is the follow, this is the nice property upon which the Batson seed upon which all the properties of the Batson seed complex rely. So we notice that in the Batson seed setting, if you have a crossing between red and blue components, then it doesn't matter whether red went over blue or blue went over red, which is not the norm. And so in some sense, these crossings sort of behave like pseudo crossings. They are there, but then they don't aren't their crossing information is, is forgotten because it doesn't matter whether red went over blue or blue went over red. So we can think of this as meaning that the Batson seed complex forgets the crossing information between distinct components of the link. So between the red and the blue components of the link, it forgets whether red went over blue somewhere or blue went over red. Okay, so the way that the Batson seed complex ends up being related to the Kavanov complex is that the Batson seed and Kavanov complexes agree for split link diagrams. That is, if red and blue were split from each other, then the Batson seed and the Kavanov complexes would agree. And this is important because in some ways, this is how we will go about proving our main theorem. So our main theorem is a statement about the Kavanov maps induced by Cobordisms. And what we will do is that we will prove something about the Batson seed maps induced by Cobordisms and then import that result back to the Kavanov world in order to conclude a statement about the, about the Kavanov maps. So now we'll briefly describe what the Batson seed complex looks like. And we'll see it's very similar to the Kavanov complex. So we're looking at the following crossing where red goes over blue. And this is what its Batson seed complex looks like. So just like the Kavanov complex, we have a zero resolution, a one resolution, and you've got a differential going from left to right, given by a saddle cobordism. But now we introduce, but now in the Batson seed complex, there is one more differential term. There's a differential going backwards from right to left. And this is also given by the canonical saddle that goes between this resolution to this resolution. And it has the coefficient given by W1 minus W2, which is the difference of the weights. But for the sake of simplicity, we can think of our weights W1 and W2 as being given by one and zero, so that this is either plus one or minus one. Okay, so now we'll describe, so we said on the previous slide that the Batson seed the, 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 the Batson seed complex for the crossing in which red goes over blue is isomorphic to the one in which blue goes over red. And here we'll explicitly describe what this isomorphism is. So we have on the so we've got on the top we see the Batson seed complex for this crossing, and the bottom the Batson seed complex for this crossing. And this is what the isomorphism map looks like. So this re resolution goes to this resolution via the identity cobordism, and this resolution goes to this re resolution via the identity cobordism, but with a coefficient given by the difference of the two weights. That is the weights W1 and W2. So the, the brown arrows indicate the 
CC map. That's a crossing change map. Okay. Okay. So the plan is that we already know that on the level of objects, that is for links, Batson seed already forgets the linking information. That is the Batson seed homology of a link is independent of whether red went over blue or blue went over red at certain points in the diagram. So it so you can just separate the two and it would make a difference. And now we ask if we can lift this forgetful behavior in the Batson seed setting from objects to morphisms. That is, we know that Batson seed forgets a linking information between the red component of your link and the blue component of your link. But now we will ask if we can show that similarly the Batson seed map doesn't care about whether the, doesn't care about how the red and the blue components of your cobordism were linked up. Let's assume that that holds, and we will show that this does indeed hold. But let's assume for the moment that it holds. Then we recall that for a split link diagram, the Batson seed and the Kavanov complexes agree. That is, the Batson seed complex of a split link diagram is the same as the Kavanov complex. Now, if, if it turns out that the Batson seed functor forgets the linking information between distinct components of a cobordism, we're still not quite done because we need to import this result back to the Kavanov setting. But what gives us hope that we might be able to import this result is that we're working with cobordisms between split links. And we know, so we know on the ends, the two ends between the cobordism, the Batson seed and the Kavanov complexes agree. So the fact that they agree on the ends gives us hope that if this behavior whole, if we can prove that the Batson seed map forgets the linking between the cobordisms, then in the special setting of cobordisms between split links, even the Kavanov map might forget the linking. So this is the broad plan. And now we will proceed to try and describe a brief proof of this. OK, so if you have a weighted cobordism C, I, so a, a cobordism is weighted. So suppose we have a two component cobordism, which is the red component and a blue component then you can assign a weight one to the red component and a weight zero to the blue component. Then you can say that they are weighted. And we show that just like the Kavanov, just like in the Kavanov setting, if you have a cobordism that induces a map between the Kavanov complexes, similarly in the Batson seed setting, you get a well-defined map between the Batson seed complexes on either end of a cobordism. Further, this turns out to be the case in such a way that the homological degree preserving component of the Batson seed complex, Batson seed map, is the Kavanov map. So the Batson seed map induced by a certain cobordism that is weighted is the Kavanov map along with some other terms as well, along that is along with some other components of the map. But such is the nature of these other components that they go down in homological degree. Okay, so now we will show that the Matson seed functor forgets linking information on the level of cobordisms. So this is the statement we're going to show now. So on the left, you have the picture we saw in our main theorem where the red and blue components are split on the end, but in the middle, they are allowed to be linked up in some complicated way. And on the right, we have the picture formed by separating the red and the blue components entirely. And our main theorem, and so what we will show now is that these two induce the same Batson seed map. So let's recall that this is not the statement of the main theorem. That is the statement of the main theorem is to show that these induce homotopic Kavanov maps. But for the time being, we will show this in the Batson seed setting and then import this result over to the Kavanov setting. So let's prove this right now. Okay, so the idea of the proof is that 
if M is a movie, we let M be a movie for the non-split cabalism between the split links. Uh, so, so what a movie is, is that if you take a cabalism and then you take slices of this cabalism, you get what you can think of as frames of a movie and you can capture all the information of the cabalism in such a movie. And between two consecutive frames, it is such that you can go, you can travel between two consecutive frames via uh, randomize the moves or uh, by saddles or births or deaths. And so that's what a movie is. And we let M denote the movie for the non-split cobordism between split links. That is, uh, M is a movie for a cobordism like this. Okay. So now we've drawn a simple, simple version for the movie M just for the sake of an example, but this holds in general for arbitrarily complicated movies, pr provided that they travel between split links. So on, so on the top, you have a green movie that I'm calling M. And on the bottom, you have a purple movie that goes between the same split links on either end. And we're calling this split of M. So, Let's look at the movie M. Uh, we've denoted the frames of the movie M in green, and we've denoted the frames of the movie split of M in purple. But the but a green frame is related to its corresponding purple frame in a very specific way. So if you look at the green frame, your red may go over the blue strand, or in certain places, blue may go over the red strand, and it could be complicated. But for every green frame, we create a purple frame by forcing the blue strand to go over the red strand everywhere. That is, if you look at the, all the purple frames in them, all everywhere the blue strand goes over the red strand, even though the corresponding green frame may have had something messy. That is, blue may go over red some places, red may go over blue in some places. But the important thing is that a green frame is related to its corresponding purple frame via a crossing change isomorphism. This is formed by, this is because of the fact that in the Batson seed setting, the red going over a blue strand or blue going over a red strand is related by a crossing change isomorphism. And so by composing such crossing change isomorphisms, you get what we are once again calling a crossing change isomorphism, but it's just a composition of multiple crossing change isomorphisms. So you have a picture that looks like this. So you've got the crossing change isomorphisms relating the green and the purple frames of the movies M and split of M respectively. And now what we do is that we show that all of these squares commute, these squares in between, that all of, they, all of them commute. And the way we go about doing this is by showing, is by showing in general that if you have, by, is by looking at local elementary cobordism moves and showing that the resulting square commutes. So what that tells us is that no matter the movie we're looking at, it could be arbitrarily complicated that all of these squares end up commuting. Now, once that's done, what we know is that the green cobordism, the green movie M on top and the purple movie split of M induce homotopic maps on bats and seed. That is, if all of these individual squares in the middle commute, then the larger square on the outside commutes. Okay, so what this tells us is that M and split of M induce homotopic maps on bats and seed. Now we want to import this result. So you see if we could replace BS by Khavanov over here and BS by Khavanov over here, we would be done. But, and to achieve that, we've, so to achieve that, we know that what, that when we say that Batson seed of M is homotopic to Batson seed of split of M, what we're really saying is that Batson seed of M minus Batson seed of split of M is H times D Batson seed plus D Batson seed times H, where D Batson seed induce, uh, indicates the Batson seed differential. Okay. So now what we can do is that we can replace the Batson C differential here by the Kavanov differential. And the reason we can do that is because they're actually the same. 
because we're working for with with movies that travel between split link diagrams. So the Batson seed and Kavanov complexes agree that is they have the same different shape. Okay, now in this equation that we see over here, we restrict attention to the parts of this equation that preserve homological degree. So we previously said that the Batson seed map induced by a cabordism is such that if you restrict attention to the homological degree preserving part of that cabord, that map, then what you're left with is the induced command of map. So now on both the left-hand side and right-hand side of this equation, we restrict attention to parts that preserve homological degree. So what you get is that you get that the Kavanov of M minus Kavanov of split of M. That's because the Batson seed got replaced by Kavanov since you restricted attention to parts that preserve homological degree. And that this difference is equals to is equal to H times B Kavanov plus B Kavanov times H. And so this basically means that we've done that is that M and split of M induce homotopic maps in the Kavanov setting. Now, split of M is the movie in which blue always goes over the red strands, which means that you can basically isotope the blue part of the movie entirely away from the red part of the movie. And what you then get is the parts where blue and red are entirely separated from one another. That is, you'd get the cabotism sep of M, the separation of M. And so what this tells us is that that in the Kavanov setting, M and separation of M induce homotopic maps. And so that basically means that we are done. Thank you for watching the talks and 